Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about frequency channel assigned to Wi-Fi or the wireless LAN and more specifically we are going to uh, discuss about frequency band which are reserved or which are being used by various standards of IEEE 802.11 standards. So we know that frequency is actually the number of cycles per second and uh, like other wireless communication standard like mobile communication and satellite communication they use actually frequency range for transmission and reception in the same way Wi-Fi devices or Wi-Fi network also uses frequency for uh, transmission and reception and uh, so the Wi-Fi devices actually operate in two frequency band the range of frequencies is known as band and band is actually like a water pipe through which signals are actually transmitted and received. Now, Wi-Fi or the wireless LAN or IEEE 802.11 standard, they operate in two frequency bands. One is 2.4 gigahertz and second is 5 gigahertz. And they are collectively known as ISM bands. So ISM stands for industrial, scientific and medical purpose. And now in addition to this Wi-Fi devices, this ISM band is also used by other wireless technologies like cordless phones, Bluetooth devices. So they also use this ISM band. So when we say band, band means that is actually a range of frequencies. For example, when we say Wi-Fi operates in 2.4 gigahertz band, we actually mean that that operates in a frequency range and that range actually extends from 2.40 like you can see here 2.40 and this goes all the way to 2.4835 so that's actually a frequency range in which this Wi-Fi uh, devices operate so this band this frequency band is further divided into sub bands and those sub bands are known as channels and now these are the channels which are assigned to these Wi-Fi devices like laptop and uh, our smartphone and access point so these channels are assigned to them to communicate with each other now this band or this this range of frequencies are further divided into channels and the first channel the first channel starts at 2.40 here 2.401 and this goes to 2.423 so this actually makes 22 megahertz so the first channel it occupies 22 megahertz and the middle of those uh, those frequencies is known as the center frequency so the center frequency that is the middle of these two frequencies 2.412 and channel is known by its center, center frequency and the channel also is known by its channel number so like say this is channel number one so this first channel is channel number one and this, in the same way the second channel will start after a gap of 5 megahertz so that channel will start at 2. Um, 2.406 of 5 megahertz it will start at 2.406 and uh, ends at 2.428 so the second channel is also 22 megahertz in width and this so this is the representation for channel so this channel is uh, will be identified by channel number two in the same way after a gap of five megahertz we will have a third channel and that channel will be identified as channel number three and the same way we will have channel number four which will start after uh, five megahertz gap from here this is this five megahertz gap and then we will have channel number four and uh, the same way we will have channel number five so you can see every channel starts uh, after five megahertz from the previous channel and you can see we have all these channels but the important point here is that these all channels actually interfere with the channel number one see from channel 
channel number one two three as well as channel number five so this is channel number five they all interfere with channel number one interfere means they they can step into this one see here they are interfering you can see so this was the channel number one but all these channels are interfering in that channel and if we operate or if, if two devices are operating in the same frequency band like if they are operating in channel number one or maybe channel number five then those two channels will be interfering or those two wi-fi devices will be interfering with each other and they will not be successful this will be challenging for successful communication between two devices so now we move uh, for further so we will have channel number six now this is channel number six and now yeah this, this is channel number six interesting thing is that this channel number six is not overlapping with channel number one if i bring down this channel like this one so let's say this is channel number six here this is channel number six and this channel number six actually is not interfering with channel number one like this is shown here you can see channel number one and channel number six they are not interfering as well as channel number you can see channel number 11 they are not interfering with each other you can see here to this one. they are not stepping in into this channel but this channel number two this you can see here this channel number two which is starting from here it means that's that is starting within channel number one so the thing is that in this case we can have uh, 14 channels but in those 14 channels we can only we can only have three channels which will not be overlapping which will not be interfering uh, with the adjacent or nearby channels so it means in a common vicinity or in a common basic service set we can only use these three channels without uh, interference now there are 14 channels and only three non-overlapping channels which can be uh, used and now in addition to this channel number one channel number six and channel number 11 let me remove these things maybe we can also have these channels which are also non-overlapping you can see channel number two and then channel number seven and then channel number 12 they are also non-overlapping channels in the same way if we select channel number 3 channel number 8 and channel number 13 so these this will also uh, these will also be not uh, overlapping so these are three channels which are non-overlapping but uh, we have uh, we can have 14 channels within this frequency band yeah, so we discussed that this uh, this bandwidth or the width of all these channels 22 megahertz so this will be 22 megahertz when we will be using this dsss or the direct sequence spread spectrum technology and if we will be using ofdm then we will have 20 megahertz wide channel so the width will be 20 megahertz in that case now although we have 14 channels but these all of the countries they differ in in its use for example if you focus on channel number one you can see channel number one whose center frequency is this that is 2.412 or 2412 megahertz so that frequency band is used in canada europe as well as in japan so channel number one is used in all these regions but if we see like in channel number 14 if we focus there you can see this channel number 14 is not used in us as well as in canada this is also not used in europe but this is used in japan so it means we have all 14 channels but they are not used in all of the regions some of them are used and some of them are not allowed to be used in that specific region in the same way in 5 megahertz or the 5 sorry 5 gigahertz band that's actually uh, contains a range of frequencies but specifically this this contains four separate and distinct bands the first band is from 5.150 to 5.250 gigahertz and this is the second band 
and then we have the third band and there's a fourth band so that's actually four separate and distinct bands you can see they are uh, identified as u and i i one u and i i two and u and i i two extended so i have taken this image from cisco press and i have put the reference here so you can see we have these uh, distinct or separate bands but these all bands are within this frequency range that is 5.150 to 5.15 uh, 5.825 and this unii actually stands for unlicensed national information infrastructure but here the important thing is that in this case we have 24 channels but all these channels are not overlapping with each because they are not overlapping but in the case of 2.4 uh, gigahertz those channels are most of the channels were interfering with each other but in this case all these 24 channels are not overlapping it means we can use all of them now to increase the data rate multiple channels can also be combined and this concept is known as channel bonding for example one one channel is 20 megahertz and if you want more bandwidth, then we can maybe combine two channels with each other. In this way, we can have 20 plus 20, it means we can have 40 megahertz wide channel for transmission and reception. So in this case, we can use this uh, channel bonding. So channel bonding is a concept where we combine these uh, channels together. Now, these are the different IEEE standards which use 2.4 or, two, or 5 gigahertz so let's see which IEEE standards actually use 2.4 gigahertz band so you can see here 802.11 802.11b and 802.11g so these are the standards which actually use 2.4 gigahertz and then uh, yeah so these are some uh, other standards IEEE standards which use 5 gigahertz and you can see there are some of the standards like 802.11n this standard uses both 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz. Now, as per their frequency, as per their band, they, they, they have different characteristics. So 2.4 gigahertz is slower. It offers uh, not that much data rate, but 5 gigahertz is faster. And 2.4 gigahertz can cover longer distance but the 5 gigahertz can cover shorter range or shorter distance and they can penetrate so 2.4 gigahertz signals can penetrate building for but for signals operating in 5 gigahertz for them this will be difficult to penetrate any building and 2.4 gigahertz actually crowded crowded means other wireless standards they are using the same frequency band but this is not that much crowded 5 gigahertz band is not that much crowded these are some of the characteristics of Wi-Fi frequency band which are assigned to Wi-Fi or the 802.11 standards. And thank you very much for your time. Hope to see you in some other video.